Hello, my name is Al Merrill, Professor of Biology and Smith Gall Institute Chair in Molecular Cell Biology at Georgia Tech. My laboratory studies sphingolipidomics, the characterization of the broad family of molecules called sphingolipids. In particular, we develop new methods to study these molecules, which allow us to analyze both new and old molecules in this family, and from our findings to develop new paradigms about sphingolipid function. Shown on this slide are the members of my laboratory, technical assistants, graduate students, and we have a wide variety of undergraduate students who work in the lab, as well as major collaborators at Georgia Tech and M. Cameron Sullards, the head of the mass spectrometry corps, May Wang in biomedical engineering, and Marion Sewer in the School of Biology. Sphingolipids were named sphingolipids because JLW Tudicum, in characterizing the lipids of brain, found a new compound which, because of its many chemically enigmatic properties, he wrote in his classic treatise on the chemistry of brain in 1884, were of such an alkaloidal nature and to which, in commemoration of the many enigmas which he presented to the acquirer, he gave the name of sphingosin after the enigmas of the sphinx. This family of compounds has continued to be enigmatic as they've been characterized over the last hundred years. They have a variety of sphingosin-like backbones summarized here for the mammalian sphingolipids where you can have uh, different uh, double bonds either located in the 4 or 5 position or farther down the chain, hydroxyl groups of a variety of positions, as well some variation in the, chain, the length of the alkyl chain. As well, you can have structural modifications, such as the addition of a fatty acid and amide linkage to the nitrogen to make the so-called ceramide family of molecules, and then a wide range of head groups to elaborate on later. We've recently found that there is another category of sphingoid bases made by mammalian cells, where you have the hydroxyl group at the one position missing. These compounds we call 1-deoxysphingonines are made by the use of a different amino acid in the synthesis of these backbone species. For this family of molecules, as you'll see in a moment, serine is the amino acid. For these, the amino acid is alanine. And a third category shown here, where both the methyl group and the hydroxyl group are missing from the one position, these are made by the condensation of the fatty acyl-CoA and the amino acid glycine. How are this, is this diverse family of molecules biosynthesized? by a very clever series of biochemical reactions that use readily available precursors, palmitic acid and other fatty acids, and amino acids, I already referenced a minute ago, serine, alanine, and glycine, plus coenzymes, that is, molecules derived from vitamins and minerals that facilitate the biochemical reactions. For this biosynthesis, we start with the fatty acyl-CoA, illustrated here, as well as by the individual on my right, and shown here, that condenses with the amino acid serine to make the classic sphingoid bases using the cofactor pyridoxal phosphate and the enzyme serine palmitoyl transferase. After that decarboxylation, you have carbon-carbon bond formation to form the three keto intermediate First is a shift base with the pyridoxal phosphate, and then released from the pyridoxal phosphate is the first fully released intermediate of this reaction, 3-ketosphingonine. The next enzyme of the pathway, 3-ketosphingonine reductase, uses a pyridine nucleotide to reduce the ketone to an alcohol, making the intermediate sphingonine. In the next step of the reaction, a family of enzymes called ceramide synthases put a fat, use a fatty acyl-CoA, to attach the fatty acid in amide linkage to the sphingoid base backbone to make a family of molecules called dihydroceramides. The dihydroceramides are then oxidized by a family of enzymes called dihydroceramide desaturases at a 4-5 trans double bond, making the, fam the backbone family called the ceramides. After ceramide biosynthesis, a variety of head groups are added to make more complex sphingolipids. For example, the head group phosphorylcholine added to a ceramide backbone makes the ceramide phosphorylcholines, otherwise called sphingomyelins. Addition instead of the carbohydrate glucose to the ceramide backbone makes glucosyl ceramides. Another sugar can be added to the head group, galactose, so that the ceramide with galactose attached are the galactosyl ceramides. And lastly, 
for a He group addition. If a phosphate group is added, then you will make ceramide phosphate. Ceramide phosphate is made as a signaling molecule, but interestingly also can be made by breakdown of sphingomyelin by an enzyme called sphingomyelinase D, which is in the venom of the brown recluse spider and accounts for the necrotic uh, pathology that uh, is associated with uh, being bitten by that category of spider. Thank you. As is shown by the diagram above, after this backbone and the simple carbohydrate head groups have been added, there are a, a large number of additional more complex so-called glycosphingolipids that can be made. An additional carbohydrate, galactose, can be made to make the galactose glucose species, which is referred to as lactosyl ceramide. After lactosyl ceramide is made, you can add additional carbohydrates, as shown here for N-acetyl galactosamine. One sometimes adds N-acetyl glucosamine for other structures. Or acidic uh, carbohydrates, such as sialic acid shown here, where you have N-acetyl neuraminic acid, and in other cases, you can have N-glycolyl neuraminic acid, so that you can end up with very complex species as summarized here from the different so-called glycan root structures that are common in mammalian sphingolipids, or for a summary of the number of variations that one finds on this theme, you can look at this diagram where we have compiled the head groups that have been reported for mammalian sphingolipids in a hypothetical pathway map to synthesize each of these species, and a download of this is available at www.sphingomap.org. Why does nature make such a diverse and complex family of molecules is because each of these structural parts has an important biological function. The head groups of the complex glycosphingolipids are important in membrane structure as well as for the communication of the surface of the cell with the extracellular environment. For example, for extracellular matrix proteins to recognize the cell surface or for proteins from neighboring cells to bind to the cell surface. In other cases, parts of the sphingolipids are used for intracellular signaling. As is illustrated here, you can have the sphingolipids such as sphingomyelin that will be hydrolyzed to the backbone ceramide, and then by further hydrolysis can be converted to sphingosine, then phosphorylated to sphingosine phosphate, which is a signaling molecule that can be released by the cell and interact with specific sphingosine 1-phosphate receptors. In some cases, instead of breaking down sphingolipids to generate second messengers, you make them from scratch, the so-called de novo biosynthetic pathway. Our laboratory studies these by developing so-called lipidomic technologies that lets us measure these molecules across the spectrum of structures and by a careful evaluation of the appropriate liquid chromatography and mass spec conditions and comparison to the appropriate standards to be able to quantify these molecules. This summarizes these techniques that we published in Methods in Enzymology Journal of Lipid Research and other journals. And in more recent work from our laboratory, we've been combining this type of mass spectrometry technology with so-called tissue imaging mass spectrometry, where you put a tissue sample onto a MALDI plate, raster across the surface with a laser, collect mass spectra at every laser burst, and then reconstruct the masses that are of interest into a virtual diagram of the tissues so that we can see in a histologic context where specific molecules are located. Lastly, another category of lipidomic technology that we're using is to use gene array and other types of gene expression technologies to study which genes and enzymes of these pathways are changed in different physiologic and pathophysiologic contexts, then putting that information in the pathway uh, context diagram so that we can link what's discovered about the genome for sphingolipids and what's discovered by the metabolome or lipidome for the sphingolipids. We do this as part of the Lipid Maps Consortium, which has recently been uh, released as one of the Nature Gateway websites. So if one looks at www.lipidmaps.org, you will be directed to the Nature Lipidomics Gateway. And we apply this technology to a variety of different physiologic contexts, such as studying basic cell biology, localization of lipids and enzymes in important regulatory context, and studying cancer, in this particular case, looking at how sphingolipids are able to modulate the behavior of colonic epithelial cells in colon cancer, and 
in other diseases such as toxicities caused by the mycotoxin fumatocins or the previously alluded to action of the brown recluse spider venom sphingomyelinase to break down uh, sphingomyelinoceramide phosphate and disrupting cell behavior. These findings have been published and this, this is a summary of some recent articles and reviews that you can go to for more information. Thank you.